Hey, welcome to the Expectant Knitter Podcast. How are you doing? I'm happy to be here and really happy you're here. Thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. And this is week 19. Yarn, make room for baby. <laughs> so let me go right into what I've been up to. This past weekend, um, I took three days and did this exhausting, wonderful yarn organization purge out of my um, garage. So back up a little. Uh, right now our guest room in the house is going to obviously turn into the nursery. And we've got to get a full-size bed, a desk, and a filing cabinet out of that room. Most logical place for us to put those things is in our garage, which is full of yarn bins, yarn in bags, treadmill, freezer, paint, all kinds of things. Steve would be very upset if he knew I was revealing our secrets of the messy garage. Um, so, Friday, it was snowing. Happy April 1st. And I took the day off from work, worked in the morning, and then in the afternoon, I started jumped in, both feet, it was very, very tiring being on my feet all day going through bin after bin of yarn. And I'm not going to show you because bins are really ugly, but just take my word for it. There was a lot of yarn to be dealt with, and I'm really, really happy to say that I now have it sorted into, you know, the uh, Paca bin and the Angora bin and the Sock bin, and then, like, the wool bins are sorted by weight, so there's the Worsted, there's a couple worsted weight bins, and then the worsted, um, not worsted, bulky bin, and everything. I know where everything is. It's all organized. I feel so good. I didn't at the time, though, because it was on my feet for about eight hours, seven hours one day, nine the next, and then like three or four finishing up the next day. So I was working on that, going through all that, and he was, Steve was such a dear, dragging the bins in and out of the garage so I could go through them. Because of course I had to be near entertainment. I couldn't just do this in silence, which I was very much entertained by the podcast Dramatic Knits and Yarnover, Yarnover, Yarn, yeah. <laughs> Yarnivore. There we go. And um, Knitting on the Fly, and who else did I watch this weekend? Watch those three. Caught up on them. So it was really good. Really fun to watch them. But anyways, um, so I'm doing all my sorting. Well, as part of that, I have boxes. I make it sound really bad. I don't have boxes. I have a few. We've talked about this. Unfinished projects out there, right? So while I was going through everything, I also looked at some of those that were languishing in the cold of the garage and no love for like a year, some of them two years. So I ripped out, and I'm going to show you pictures because I'm very proud of myself. It was hard to do. So I frogged five things. I frogged some knucks or fingerless mitts, or they, I guess they had fingers. Is that fingerless mitts? Well, whatever. They I had done the little fingers, and they looked really nice, and I loved the yarn, but I didn't know what to do with them, and so... I didn't want to finish it, and the yarn was better off somewhere else, so I ripped those. I got rid of, I had done one mitten, and it was like, it could use like another half an inch before it would have been a comfortable fit on my hand. Got rid of the mitten. Um, I was working on a vest, this really cool wrap thing that's knit all in one piece. And I would say I was about halfway done and I had no idea because it's garter and um, it's kind of blindly trusting the designer. I think for some reason I have the name Hannah sticking in my head. I don't know if that's the designer or the name of the pattern. I'll link it. It was a knitty pattern. And I was about halfway through it and I just pulled it. I had dyed the yarn myself. I loved the yarn. It was a purple-brown variegated mix. I had so frogged the whole thing, it took a really long time. And meanwhile, my allergies are acting up because there's yarn flying all through the air, all through the house. Not yarn, but like little fiber, you know, when you're ripping, stuff goes into the air. Anyways, so I did that. I frogged two sweaters. One of them was um, creme brulee yarn. 
decadent fibers creme brulee that I got at um, I think I got that particular skein at Rhinebeck but I've gotten some at the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival as well and I really like their yarn I made a hay teach with the first bit of it but um, so this I had a back and, ha and a front panel done <laughs> the skein was dyed so that half of each round of yarn was gray and half of it was black which is really pretty but not necessarily the right look for going back and forth like it just made weird pulls on the front because it was such a short distance I was covering every time so um, and that, that was really hard for me to rip because you know I'm like all I needed was another front and two little cap sleeves and it'd be done but it didn't look great so I feel like I've grown as a knitter that I can say just because I put the effort in doesn't mean that it's worth finishing you know if it's not gonna be exactly what I want so <laughs> frog that one um, and then I had started this crazy color work scarf I was using uh, not scarf fair isle <laughs> sweater um, I had about this much done on it so not a lot started at the sleeve because I you know Elizabeth Zimmerman's logic of use the sleeve sleeves as your swatches if you don't want to swatch so that's what I was doing and I was using Cascade 220 there's a reason why most in uh, Fair Isle sweaters are knit on size twos and fours with sport weight or finer yarn it was really heavy like that was gonna be a 20 pound sweater so as beautiful as it looked I knew I wasn't gonna finish it I just didn't have the time so that one got frogged and that makes five frogged items and then I finished off some dishcloths I don't know what I was thinking I had knit um, like three and a half and had 10 minutes to go on the fourth one so they were rainbow really bright colored dishcloths so I finished that off off the needles I had all these open needles and stitch markers and all kinds of goodies by the time I was done my reorganization so that was great to get them back into there with their buddies <laughs> in the needle cases and in my little notions bags and then um, once that was done I moved up to my closet upstairs because the guest room has a double closet in it which Steve has been using as his own and we want to give the baby a little room in the closet so we were thinking like his big suits that he doesn't need to wear or maybe our winter coats some of that could shift into my closet which is the master bedroom walk-in closet that I do not really want to share so <laughs> but I'm trying I am trying so my closet um, interestingly enough I have clothes that was also in storage in the garage because since college so in the last like seven years my weight has yo-yoed so I've kept clothes from gone from a size 18 to a size 8 and back up to a size 14 and so I have all this range of clothing and it's like okay enough I'm probably not going to be an 8 again and I don't want to be an 18 again so I sent a bunch of clothes to Goodwill and made some room in the closet which was great lots of free hangers now you know it's that's one of those things it's like you buy clothes and you just cram it in there and you don't really notice and then once you clean it out and you know the clothes can go like this instead of being like ah! okay pull this one thing out you know there's room for the clothes to move and actually like peruse it and pick out what you want to wear it's really nice so hopefully I won't go crazy buying clothes but I had a laugh because realizing that some of the clothes I was taking out of my closet was summer clothes that I would normally wear that I'm not going to be able to fit into I'm not going to wear some of that clothes for two years like it'll have been last summer to next summer okay people who have been pregnant before are like yeah genius but I bet if you have never been pregnant you have not thought about this and so be forewarned that whatever season you're pregnant during you're not going to get to wear that clothes for two years so really enjoy it the year before and the year after it's my two cents on that so house is making room for baby next thing we need to do is um, he's working on getting rid of the paint I, the people that lived here before had a giant um, their hobby was painting the walls so they bought lots and lots of paint and would just paint over and over and over and over 
And so we end up with these really pretty textured walls that we like, you know, if this is actually two or three colors of like a beige paint. I love it. I'm not creative enough to do it or maybe I don't have the desire to spend my time doing that. But anyway, so they left all this paint. And so he's working on disposing of it the appropriate way with cat litter and I don't know, he read how to do it. And um, my parents took the treadmill and they're gonna take the freezer and so we're actually gonna be able to walk through there and move some stuff out. So there will be room for baby. <laughs> but that's, that's my ramble on what's been going on. So how about we talk about what I'm knitting. Okay, I'm gonna take a drink. Diet Coke. I know, it's caffeinated. I really shouldn't, but one cup. So this week, I promised you last time that I would not talk about the Maja, uh, the blanket that I have been working on, the color block blanket with um, 16 squares, three colors per square. What is that, 16 times three? I don't know, 45, eight, 48 ends to be woven in that needed to be sewn into strips and then the strips sewn together and then an I-cord border put on it. I said I wasn't gonna talk about it unless I had actually done some knitting. But guess what? I finished it. I put in a huge amount of effort and I'm stoked. I am so thrilled at the way this blanket came out. I cannot sing its praises loud enough. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> it, uh, it took me about four hours and 800 different block arrangements. Sarah from I Swear I'm, I'm Knitting, you were with me through this. I had you up on the TV and I was arranging my box and <laughs> you were making me laugh. But anyways, um, yeah, so arranging them to get the colors the way I wanted and make sure it wasn't like a chunk of purple here and nicely mixed together. And I'm so proud. I'm so proud. <laughs> So here's the blanket. It's finished. It's really good size too. You want to see the back? Just because I'm proud. Woo! See all my nicely woven in ends. Yay! So this is in Lion Brand Cottonese 50 acrylic, 50 cotton. Has good drapes to it. It's nice and thick and squishy. I knit it on size 7 or 4.5 mm needles, <laughs> mm, millimeter, sorry, 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, it was supposed to measure out to be, please hold, a 32 inch by 32 inch blanket. And I'm just curious, because I think it's a little, little bigger than that. Yeah, my squares were supposed to be eight inches. Um, and it looks like, the finished product is actually 38 inches by 38 inches. So, but I blocked each square in between while I was working on my bins and sorting yarn. I'd set the timer in the laundry room and put three or four in to soak. And um, I just use, I like eucalyptus. That's, I like unscented stuff. So that's what I've been, I've always used for my hand knit. So put them in to soak and then put out the hammock. I have a drying, well it's not a hammock, I guess it's a drying rack, but the cats use it like a hammock when it's out. So I put them on there and just patted them out and pin them, let them be comfortable the way they were. And I was really pleased. Um, when we, I have done this blanket before as a group project. Everybody knits a couple squares and then we sew them together. While it was wonderful to have 15 people to sew up the strips and you know, someone take one side, someone else take another side, and we'll knit an edge on this thing. Um, while that was really nice, sewing together, I don't know, 25 different size squares, even though they had all been blocked, some more vigorous, some less, was a nightmare, like really hard to line up. It was very easy to, to um, sew up my own squares. That sounds kind of like I'm bragging. I'm not, I don't mean it to be. It was just, think about that. If you do a blanket project, a blanket as a group project that it can get hairy trying to sew all those different shapes up unless you're all similar or unless you're all very committed to head engage and are able to do that because some knitters are new and they don't really get the concept of gauge and if they do they don't understand how to change it to make things more 
the way you want them to be. Can you guys see Linus? He's coming for a visit. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, Pasha, John. Woo! Um, what else have I been working on? The Juanita socks by Cookie A. I am knitting these with Aussie sock in the colorway Peach Cobbler on uh, 1.5 needles or 2.5 millimeter. Um, this is the second sock. The first one's finished. I'm really happy with the way they're coming out. I have just started the, uh, I converted it to toe up, so it's normally knit cup down, but I'm a rebel and I don't want to knit cup down. So I converted it and I am just starting the gusset increases for the heel. So we should see heels next week. So this is going along. Not as fast because I spent the majority of my knitting time working on the Maja this week, but so there's that. Um, I can't remember how far along I was when I showed you my oh, Venus socks last week. Does this look familiar? Does it look, did, did you see this already? I don't know. I think I got a couple rows in. I don't remember. This week has just flown by and yeah. So here's where I am on that. This is again 1.5 or 2.5 millimeter needles. Um, opal. Colorway Blind Venus, just a 4x2 rib, my basic sock that I like. So this is going slow, of course, but that's what these are for. You know, it's the slow, you're stuck in traffic, pull it out of your purse and knit it sock. So um, that's that. The flamboyant shawl that I was working on by Stephen West, I was, but I finished a blanket this week, so I think I get a pass on showing you progress on that. <laughs> Check with me next week. Maybe I'll have touched it. And last but not least, my Mited Square Wrap Shawl Blanket. <clears throat> um, I finished two more squares on it this week, so they're tiny, but it's also small needles again because I love them. 1.5 US, 2.55 millimeter, millimeter needles. Um, yeah, I finished this one. <laughs> And this one. So one is Barocco, this one's Barocco sock, and this one is Pagewood Farms Alaska, I believe. So um, I measured it and it is 28 inches right now. If I keep, if I start decreasing after this row, like this is the last increase row, if it were going to be, well no, if it were going to be a shawl it would have, it would go up to 11 across and right now it's at 9 across. So not sure if 28 inches is big enough for a baby blanket. I've done a lot of research looking for patterns recently and it seems like there are a lot out there with 28 inch blankets, but I don't know, this thing is a lot bigger than that. But it has a different purpose. You know, this is a lot lighter and not, maybe this is just for over the stroller or the car seat, not necessarily like cover up and be warm, just, you know, keep the chill off type of blanket. So I'm going to keep working on that. Did I show you this before? Did I show me this before? Oh, I'm a genius. <laughs> Midweek while I was working on the Maja and cursing all the ends I had to weave in, I uh, thought about this little guy and all the squares that are going to be knit for this and all the little ends to be woven in and I thought, oh dear God, I'm going to have such a hard time with all that. It's going to take me forever. But it would appear that I wove in, I've woven in my ends on the first two thirds of the blanket. So that's good. Maybe I'll keep that up, weaving them in as I go so that it's not a big overwhelming task come the end. So there's that. That's my knitting. What's in my knitting world? Um, I hope you're knitting something similarly exciting in yours. <laughs> Expectations. So I told you about the cleanup and the baby prep there. I also, it's week 19, as I said, so this was the week that we are supposed to call to set up all of our classes with the hospital. Um, and so I called one day and, you know, they got my name and due date. And okay, this is when you need to take this class and that class. And, um, working it out against Steve's class schedule and travel schedule. So 
made it so that he can go to every single one with me, which is great. That's what we want. And there's one that I'm not allowed to go to, that it's taught by dads for dads, and it's all like the stuff that they're afraid of, and I, I don't know, but I think it's really cute, and I wonder if when my mom was pregnant back in the day, if they used to do things like this, or is this a new creation that, you know, dads have specific concerns that are just for them and a different perspective than we do. So I'll be anxious for him to take that class and tell me all about it and why I couldn't be there. So, um, and then yesterday I was sitting at my desk and, you know, I'm a hungry girl. So it's 9 o'clock and I have my 9 a.m. snack. Within like 20 minutes, I feel this like blow in my belly. I don't know how else to describe it except as I've read it described, which is as popcorn popping, like that feeling, except it's inside you in your stomach. And so I felt it and I was like, oh my goodness, that's the baby. That's totally the baby. Like I felt it at night. Um, or early in the morning when I'm lying in bed, like you could feel an arm or a kick or something. Like it's not a whole bunch of movement. It's like, oh, something's happening. I know that. But sitting at my desk, I was like, okay, so I ate and now you're doing somersaults in there. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting. So then, like 11 o'clock rolls around, I have another snack. Again, like 20 minutes later, poop, 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 poop. I was like, oh my goodness, baby, you are making yourself known. <laughs> so I was so excited, I called Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, that's great, dear. I'm like, oh, I told my coworkers. Everyone was like, popcorn popping? That sounds disgusting. I don't want to have kids. And we all had a good laugh over her. But, yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, I also have something very important. Okay, get rid of my smile. Get my serious face on. I have a letter to read to you. Okay, you ready? Dear future Steph, do not, no matter how tempting it may seem, knit a color block, intarsia, neon, animal print, brightly colored sweater for your child. While this seems like a good idea at 30, thinking back to how you behaved when you were a child, you teased those kids, you made fun of them for having hand knit, homemade, animal, crazy colored sweaters. Under no circumstances do this to your child. <laughs> it would be knit with love, but it would be corrupted into a form of evil. You've been warned. Sincerely, current Steph. All right, so this is what made me think of that. This is from the Pattern Works summer preview for 2011 came in the mail this week I was standing at the counter in the kitchen flipping through it talking with Steve I said oh look how cute it is I really want to knit it oh my god with the little giraffe and the elephant and he looked at me and he was like really and I said you're right I'm crazy please remind me please stop me please don't let me knit our child anything that looks like that no matter how cute the advertisement maybe. So I thought I needed to take it down for the future that I am not to knit a sweater like that. <laughs> oh, and what else is going on? Well, since what's new on the horizon, you ask? Okay. Um, since that blanket's done, I don't necessarily have to knit three blankets, but if I wanted to, uh, my next blanket would be the Sprout Blanket by Hannah Bretz, 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 Bretz. Um, so this is knit with, I'm swaying it, like I, I think that helps somehow, I'm not sure. It's knit with um, Spud and Chloe yarn, which is a, I'm guessing a worsted weight spudding, yeah it just says, oh. Three hanks of Spud and Chloe sweater in the color grass, which is an, uh, an organic cotton blend yarn, and it's using size 8 needles. So it should be a pretty quick knit. I think it's adorable. I have lots of brightly colored worsted weight, I know this now, worsted weight green yarn in my stash. So this could be on the needles sometime soon. So you've been warned. 
I've been warning everybody. Oh my god, you've been warned. You've been warned. Ugh, please forgive me. Don't find me super annoying. And last but not least, let's discuss the Cardigan Contest Cal. So, everyone else is having contests. All the other podcasters, the night girls are having their month-long giant one-year anniversary contest, which, uh, ah, it looks so good and crazy. 90% um, <clears throat> Knitting has a contest. Dramatic Knits is having a contest right now. Everybody's having a contest. I want one too. I'm jealous. So, I thought we could have a knit-along slash contest in which we have, like, we'll take six weeks and I've picked out five patterns and you knit as many or as few <laughs> as you want. Hopefully you want to knit at least one of these baby sweaters. And we'll post pictures in the thread. Each, each finished object is an entry into the contest. And at the end of May, so we'll say June 1st, um, well, I will draw names and there'll be lots of prizes, including some String Theory Caper Sock, which you know I love, uh, three use Twisted and Fiber, um, Socks That Rock Lightweight, and Ellen Cooper's Sonnet Zohar Socks, that yarn as well. Um, you can, like I said, enter as many times as you want, and hopefully these sweaters will inspire you and you'll want to knit them too, because even if you're not having a baby, it's spring. Someone you know is having a baby, and they make great little gifts. So, the first sweater in the Knit Along, is, or the first option, you don't necessarily have to do it, is the Green Zebra Baby Sweater by Dove Knits. This is a kind of a chunky striped sweater with worsted weight yarn. It's good for, I'd say it's a good unisex sweater. Um, and these will all be linked in the show notes. And they're over on the Ravelry group on the discussion board. Okay, yes, hello baby. Um, yeah, they're listed on the discussion thread too. So, And the group is the Expected Knitter Podcast. So check us out, join if you haven't. We have a lot of fun over there. And thanks to everyone who has. I'm really happy to hear from you and talk about what's going on. So... Uh, the second sweater option is the Summer Chills Cardigan by Danielle Rayner. This um, is a really cute sweater. I could see it as a variegated, with it variegated yarn. It's another worsted weight sweater. So see, look how quick these are going to knit. Baby clothes, tiny, worsted weight, fast, you're golden. Um, the third option is the Tulip sweater because everyone needs one of those. I love that sweater. And I would love to knit another one. So that is Tulips, a colorful cardigan for baby by Linda Penne, Penny, Pe Penny. In case you can't tell, I have a hard time with uh, pronouncing names here. So, and that one is listed as an Aran weight yarn. Uh, the fourth option is the Seamless Yoked Baby Sweater by Cicely Glowick McDonald. Oh, I hope that one, I got that one right. Yeah, that's how I'd say it. So that has um, a little flower detail along the front edges. It's really cute. Um, and that one is in DK weight yarn. I think that's a little more. Yeah. I was going to say, a, sorry, a little more girly. But that's just my taste. It doesn't have to be. Um, and the fifth option is the Province Baby Cardigan by Carol... Barneys. Uh, that one is, it goes up to size six months, so it's a really small sweater. I just knit with sport weight yarn, but I think it's super cute. Actually, I think that's the flowered one, and the seamless yoked is, doesn't have little flowers on it. I got my notes mixed up. Sorry. Um, the seamless yoked reminds me of a February lady sweater without the lace or February baby sweater without the lace. So those are the five options. Four of the five are free because I thought that would help everybody, make you more inclined to join. And the tulip, you, tulip sweater pattern you can buy at any LYS that carries Dream Color Classic, according to the website. Don't hold me to that. I hope you can find it there. So yeah, got some good prizes. I'm excited. I hope you want to join. Um, again, the contest will run until June 1st. Knit, enter as many times as you'd like. I'll be loving to see all of your little baby sweaters. And I'm going to cast on tonight.
for something because I need a new project now that the Maja is done. I can't just knit socks and the I can't just knit everything on 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. So I'll be doing one of these, probably one of the worsted weight ones. I'm not sure exactly what yet. But anyway, so love to see you over on Ravelry. Love getting comments. And thank you very much for your kind iTunes reviews. It warms my heart. Um, it's been great talking to you. I hope you have a good week knitting. And I will see you next week for week 20 when I'm halfway there. <sighs> okay. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye.